Well, th thank you first uh, to everyone to join this for joining this uh, this session. Um, today we're going to be doing a workshop regarding Istio uh, multi-tenant um, using you know uh, glue mesh. So first, um, I just want to say if you guys have any questions, obviously don't hesitate during this. Um, uh, this session, right? Uh, or after, right? So we are always available. I'm on Istio Slack, or you guys can join also the Soul Slack. Uh, we'll be happy to help you in any, um, any matter there. So uh, again, I'm going to be using, uh, we're going to be using the Istio Slack or this chat. So just, you know, obviously ask the questions uh, wherever uh, you want. Uh, now, Quick introduction um, regarding your speakers today. My name is Adam Saya. I'm a field engineer uh, at Solo. Uh, uh, so basically, I help um, our prospects and customers and users to adopt um, API gateways and, and service mesh in, in general. Um, and uh, so I'm available on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or just email if you guys want to uh, reach out. Uh, with me, Alex, today. Yeah, hey everyone. Um, my name is Alex Lee. I'm also a field engineer here um, based out of the West um, with Adam uh, at Solo and here to uh, answer any questions on chat. So feel free to um, post anything you might have and looking forward to this workshop today. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, and last but not least, we have Christian that's going to join us later uh, in the session. Uh, everyone knows Christian. Uh, so yeah, he, he's probably gonna help us with, uh, with questions in the chat if you guys have any, anything um, in particular. Okay, let's, uh, let's get starting. So what we're gonna do is we are going through, we're gonna go through a, a, a quick presentation about um, maybe 15 to 20 minutes just to set up like basically what's glue mesh and why glue mesh. Um, and after that, we are going to move to the lab environment. Uh, a little bit about the lab environment. It's all uh, web-based, so you don't need anything but uh, a browser. Uh, I do recommend using Chrome for that because I saw some issues with, uh, with Safari in the past. So it's going to be a link and uh, you're going to have your environment ready and we're just going to, you know, follow along uh, with me. Awesome. Um, so first, I'm not going to do an intro again to Istio, but we know that, you know, uh, the monolithic to microservice migration, that's what actually, you know, drove most of the service mesh discussion in the first place. So we see a lot of benefits for, for microservice uh, adoption. We know that's going to increase um, our capacity to uh, modify a part of the system. We know that to allow us to scale easily uh, and so on. There's so many benefits to a microservice architecture compared to a monolithic one, right? Uh, and, and we see in, in it, it's actually, you know, um, we see that we can, for example, as I mentioned, scale easily, deploy to multi-clouds, uh, deploy, you know, have communities to deal with like self-healing if your service is failing and so on. But also it impacts the way the team works. Now, now that we have multiple small components, we can have multiple small teams, the small teams deal with their microservice and they can just take it all the way to product. Right, now, um, the thing is, so we're looking at, you know, like when we adopted, when we started adopting the microservice world, okay, there's a lot of, lot of benefits, but also there's a lot of drawbacks. Um, if, if we count, if we, if we look at, you know, um, a microservice architecture, if something is failing, for example, right? Like one service down the road is failing, how to first monitor what's going on, how to know which service is failing your request? Another question would probably be, um, how can I put some retry mechanism in place if some like a network issue happens? Because now we have network as a variable. We need to be able to, you know, retry some calls and so on. Um, and th there is also, you know, the security aspect. Now that we have a small, small modular uh, services, the attack surface is larger, right? So to solve this 
these solutions. I mean, there were like a lot of iterations. And I think the earlier ones were mainly to actually add libraries within the same microservice to kind of do this cross-cutting concerns. Uh, but we definitely realized that this is not really an optimal approach, mainly because you're tying this directly to your application code where it doesn't need to, right? Uh, or also if you have a, a polyglot environment, um, let's say you have multiple technologies within the same uh, your same uh, company. How to deal with you know? Let's say do I have to maintain multiple libraries to do the same thing, uh, or you know in different languages? There is a lot. So mainly the solution to that was to adopt Service Mesh, and uh, we are familiar with Istio here. Everyone knows Istio was the solar is actually the server bullet to this. A, lot of you know concerns we have now specifically to a single cluster deployment it's pretty straightforward and pretty standard so we're gonna have Istio installed there on top of our applications it's gonna deal with security with multi, like, uh, mtls between components it's gonna deal with monitoring it's gonna de deal with uh network resiliency you know applying retries and timeouts and so on now when it comes to istio again maybe easier on the single cluster. Now, um, you know, like basically Istio itself was a solution to, to anything um, that we were dealing with in the microservice uh, world. Like, you know, security with MTLS, observability, if something happens, we know uh, we can just use Istio to basically monitor what's going on. Uh, policy, apply policies between services, allow communication from service to another, uh, resiliency, obviously using uh, retries and so on, and end-to-end and, and -end OTC, right? So um, like, you know, for example, enforcing uh, job validation between components and so on. There's, a, there's multiple aspect to it. Now, easy for a single cluster, it gets really complicated. It's not being complicated for a multi-cluster deployment. So if we look at multi-cluster here in this example here, um, if you have different services um, and maybe the services are spread out across multiple clusters, now how to you know how to do a multi-cluster? And I'm not just saying like how to set it up because maybe that's the easiest part of it, right? Even if it's still complicated. Um, I mean, you still provide ways like using the primary primary model or primary secondary, and you can still have your multi-cluster deployment. The question would probably be how to manage how to manage my configuration, like how to how to apply a policy once, be able, able to replicate it everywhere, how to deal with failover across clusters, uh, and so on. It is possible. It will require a lot of configuration. We're going to see that probably later in, in this workshop. So again. What, what is missing in this full picture? Big companies, multiple clusters, you know, what is missing in there? Um, first one is the trust. How to establish a trust mul across multiple clusters where microservices can do MTLS from a cluster to another. Another question would be, um, how can I, you know, design multi-tenancy? Um, if you want to apply configuration and apply some airbag rules, or want to just you know be able to to control my application that's spread out across multiple clusters, I don't want I don't want to impact any other application or any other system across my clusters. I want to be able to I, I want to make sure that my team can do uh, can manipulate you know configuration only uh, in the namespaces or only in the application that I care about and should not be able to impact anyone else. So there is segregation there, uh, you know, in the multi-tenancy model, cross-cluster. Um, also, just, you know, traffic control and, and, and things like that. So how can I do um, an easy failover uh, across multiple clusters? Like, you know, like let's say I have a service foo in one cluster, talking to a service bar in a different cluster. And I don't really, I don't even want to care about like setting up the small pieces to know where is the service bar. I just want to apply a policy to say, hey, failover. Like if you can reach out, uh, reach to this service bar, just look for it for the closest in the closest um, cluster. Obviously, the same cluster as possible. If not, look for it like on the closer 
in a you know closer cluster. Um, and another really important thing is uh, onboarding in your clusters. Um, so imagine you just want to add one cluster to this multi-mesh deployment. Um, it should be straightforward. You should be able to just add one cluster. Everything is wired correctly. Everything is set up to for a team to either scale their component and have more services on it, or to actually onboard a new team uh, altogether and be able to use that cluster for for that matter. And then uh, uh, one, you know, really important component also is how to manage the lifecycle of Istio across multiple clusters. Assuming you want to, you know, you have like thousands of clusters or hundreds, a lot of clusters, and you just want to be able to create a simple policy to just say, okay, now upgrade Istio uh, or, you know, basically install, upgrade, just basic lifecycle management of Istio across multiple clusters in an easy manner. And that's also lacking from, you know, um, like just basic Istio approach. Now, the solution to that. Uh, here at Solo, we designed Glue Mesh mainly to answer this particular questions. Um, how can I do, uh, like, how can I secure and unify the trust and the identity across multiple clusters? How can I onboard the cluster easily? How can I define multi-tenancy? Um, how can I apply policy? Uh, like, is there an easier way of applying a policy once and being replicated and deployed everywhere? Um, what about observability, not only in a single cluster, but for multi-cluster? Uh, what about extending this using my custom authentication mechanism or using my custom transformation models or anything like that? How to extend that easily too? Right, like service service communication or or cross cluster service communication, and also how to if I have certain APIs internally, how to have an easy way to expose them through a developer portal where it's a self service where people can just go connect, look at the APIs that exist, uh, create an API key for example, or so on or something like that, and be able to use it. Right, so. That's the focus of Glue Mesh as a product on top, obviously, of Istio. Now, in terms of architecture, uh, and if you guys are familiar with Istio, the way we do multi-cluster, I was mentioning, you know, um, either having a single control plane across multiple clusters, uh, or you can have multiple cluster or multiple control plane on every single cluster. But the primary primary is to model, right? Now, this is still, I say, the improvement that we added there is for us to have like only one management plane that manages all this cluster at once. What I mean by that is that every single cluster will have access only to that management plane to do um, discovery and to do, you know, to get data, to get policies and so on. So that's mainly what we are using, only that channel of communication, where if you go with a primary primary model, you'll probably see in Istio that every single cluster is control D, every single cluster will need to have access to every single other cluster, right? Like the cube API of every single other cluster. So think about 100 deployments, going to have every single cluster talking to 99 others. And that's risky in two manners. First, there's like a lot of configuration. Second, the most important thing is that it, if one of your clusters is compromised, well, now every, everyone can access every other cluster, right? So that's in, an important aspect to look at when we talk about architecture. So, and... Um, Another another component that is really important, and we were talking about like um, you know simplifying the policy management and configuration. Um, assuming you want to do service failover from a cluster to another, right? I mean, you can do that with Istio directly. You're probably going to have like I don't know, let's say ten CRs that you need to create, right? maybe some you know virtual services and service entries 
here and there and so on, right? Now, imagine having to manage this configuration uh, and be able, be able to apply it. What you're gonna do is probably gonna have that in Argo CD or in, you know, in Git and have a, a GitOps approach to that to be able to deploy this configuration. Now, this is not easy to manage. I mean, we're talking about two, two clusters now. Imagine you have like hundreds of them. Um, how to manage this? Like how to manage this explosion of, of configuration? Imagine you're doing a lot of failover, a lot of multi-cluster routing and so on. Where if you have a management plane and basically the only policy you define is, okay, um, create some failover from any service, any service called foo to any service called bar anywhere, anywhere they are. That's the only policy you have to define. There's only going to be one CR that you're going to have to persist and manage and enforce our back on it or anything you need. And you're going to be in Git and easy to understand and easy to apply and let the management plane deal with the explosion of configuration, deploying multiple cluster with, with what they need, right? So there's a real um, impact there in, in terms of just number of resources you're going to um, manage. And we see in this chart here, for example, uh, where the red line is basically just, let's say, one manifest doing the failover example I was giving here, where the blue line is the number of clusters you're going to import. More cluster you're going to add, more resources you're going to have to manage, right? Um, and yeah, in, in terms of architecture, things are, are pretty straightforward. You're going to have like, um, you know, uh, basically you're going to have multiple clusters. Uh, every, and you're going to have like a management, management plane it can be on a separate cluster. You can, or you can use one of your workload clusters as a management cluster. And then you're going to have agents in every single cluster and a glue mesh agent. The glue mesh agent will basically detect the services and you know, do basic discovery there. Uh, we're going to be able to actually communicate. Sorry about that. We're going to be able to communicate to uh, the management plane to push data regarding, obviously, we're talking about workloads and, and services, but also to pull data uh, regarding policies that need to be applied on, on, these, on these clusters, okay? So, and that's an easy model, management plane, agents on every single cluster. Now, in, in terms of the advantage of using a management plane, um, it is using, obviously, having the abstraction layer on top of it. Um, so now, instead of having to deal with mainly, you know, the issue resources and the underlying uh, resources like the Envoy uh, sidecars and so on, now everything is collapsed to be, now it's just easy to manage. You just have your glue mesh management, um, and then you're going to have your application itself, right? So nothing in between. Um, it simplifies the way uh, we see configuration today. Um, but now, and one of the most important aspects, and that's actually the core of this uh, workshop, is multi-tenancy. Um, well, we have multiple features in GlueMesh, but I think this is the one that is actually, for us, that's the focus today on. Like, we're going to talk about workspaces. Um, if we look at, like, a traditional way of approaching, um, you know, multi-tenancy in, 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 um, in today's deployments, you may be gonna have like the certain airbag rules on specific namespaces across multiple clusters, right? Um, but now this is not enough, especially when we talk about multi-cluster, uh, like a multi-cluster service mesh. Uh, how can I define rules or actually grouping of namespaces uh, and, and you know, across multiple clusters? Because we see that a lot where an application doesn't reside, like, but it's not 100% of the application gonna be on the same cluster, same namespace. Sometimes you have pieces here and pieces there on different clusters. How can I be able to define a logical grouping of this workloads and this namespaces to be called 
this workspace is for my application foo, my team foo. And they're going to manage that. They're going to be able to apply configuration there. They're going to be able to modify configuration there. They're going to be able to do service isolation that no one can talk to the services there, right? On, on, on their group of application where, um, you know, you have a different team, for example, an operation team that deals with the gateways and deals only with like north-south traffic. And they don't want to really care. Actually, they want to isolate that layer, which is the operation layer, mainly like, let's say, uh, the edge, uh, like the ingress gateways layer. And that should be an abstraction that should not be impacted by the application team. The application team cannot or should not apply any policies to the ingress gateway because that's not it's not that's not their their domain. Their domain is their application. And you're gonna also have an admin uh, persona maybe that just wanna enforce certain rules across every single cluster, right? All over uh, my deployment. So you're gonna have you can have multiple layers. That's mainly what we're trying to answer. With the workspaces you're going to have multiple layers where you can have multiple personas and they can be responsible only a part of the system only a part of their the application or any part of the deployment so they cannot impact everyone else and um during the workshop you're going to see mainly this okay um now just a couple other features <clears throat> that uh gonna you know exist and we're gonna talk about uh, maybe later um service routing right like we mentioned like um you know basically how how to do a routing across clusters how to define like simplify the routing between services we're gonna see that using virtual destinations and so on later uh <clears throat> you know enforcing security just offloading mainly that's the gateway level so uh, either how to define easy, pol e easy policies to enforce security at the gateway or between clusters. Um, X auth, you know, like that's what I'm mentioning here is what is on top of Blue Mesh with all, actually with Blue Mesh Gateway too. That's, um, <clears throat> so we have the set of features to manage Istio, but also on top of that, not only for from Istio management and configuration standpoint, we added a lot of features on top of, for example, Istio Ingress Gateway using Glue Mesh Gateway, where we can do things that Istio Ingress Gateway can't today, right? Istio Ingress Gateway today is designed mainly for, uh, you know, east-west traffic control. But when it comes to like um, edge or north-south traffic control, it, it is lacking some features. And uh, we see that, for example, in terms of data transformation, I want to transform a certain set of data um, uh, automatically. I want to be able to, for example, I want to transform a request automatically. I want to be able to um, you know, enforce authentication, OIDC and everything. Uh, you know, like enforce auth and OZ at the gateway, but like, you know, OIDC authentication uh, was an example, API keys and so on. Um, what about data loss prevention? What about rate limiting? What about uh, WAF? All these features don't really make, I mean, don't are not that important like for an uh, east-west type traffic, which is like cross-cluster traffic, but they are important when we talk about, we talk about edge traffic, any communication coming from outside to your network, right? So that is there on top of Istio Ingress Gateway to enhance that, I mean, we're not, we're just adding our own filters on top of the EC ingress gateway uh, to just enable this uh, this edge, edge control, I'll be saying. Um, just quickly here, I talked about transformation, uh, resiliency. I mean, that's, that's what we're gonna see during our workshop. Um, mainly, how are we going to like, enforce like easy policies across multiple clusters and so on. How can we, we can fine tune uh, the control there, right? And uh, rate limiting, I mentioned that it can be an edge case. It can be like a, like, I mean, an ingress from um, like a north south type traffic. It can also be like service service type traffic too. Uh, you know, 
service service traffic management and you know we 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 are going to see that later using uh, you know failover and decision rules basically how to simplify the routing to multiple uh, services uh, across multiple clusters failover we're going to see that too how we easily fail over from a cluster to another with a simple policy without defining a lot of underlying istio configuration and uh auth and Aussie, right um that's uh we talked about it in the edge case but the trust in the identity that's also propagated to like a you know like service to service communication. Uh, am I allowed to talk to another service in different namespace? Am I, um, you know, am I allowed to see that service actually at all? Um, and, and things like that. So we provide a lot of mechanisms to simplify this. So um, I was going fast here just to kind of set up where and why, I mean, why glue mesh, right? So the core of it, the gist of it is mainly helping Istio users to adopt or actually to scale their environment, be able to allow them to create easy policies you know, to control the traffic and security over multiple clusters or even a single cluster, how to define um, easy you know, uh, segregation and multi-tenancy between multiple teams and have different persona operating your system, um, monitoring across multiple clusters, um, you know, uh, edge cases, how to add on top of Istio Ingress Gateway, how to add more edge features there to enforce like YDC flows and DLP and, and WAF and so on. So that's the gist, the gist of it. And now we are ready for the labs. Okay, so there you go. We have a link in the chat here. Click on it. It's going to take you to this page, right? I mean, the first time you click, it's going to go to a login page where you're going to have to create an account. It's going to take two seconds there. And then click again on that link and it's going to take you to this uh, page here where it tells you to gain access. Um, once you click on gain access, uh, on, on add to my study room, you should be able to see the workshop in your, my exclusives. And, uh, so that's, that's how it looks, right? So you're going to have to click on start track. Okay. Again, if you guys need any help with these steps. Let us know. So again, click on that link. First time you have to log in or create an account. The second step, click again on that link, go on the, add the class to your, to your courses, and then click on start track. And they're gonna take about, uh, about a minute or two to get the environment ready. Okay, again, so the first lab will just create two different clusters and we're gonna have some set of demo application in them. Um, they're gonna, you know, and we're gonna install Glue Mesh on a specific management cluster. And we're gonna be able to, to explore like all these multi-tenancy aspects and, uh, and so on. Okay, again, it's gonna take a couple seconds here. All right, so once this is ready, um, you should be able to click on start. And by the way, if, if it's possible, I'm gonna um, start doing like a quick breaks between the labs. If you have, uh, if you are in the same stage, please put like a, a message or a thumbs up in the chat so we know uh, that we are ready to uh, to move forward, okay? I thank you, Robert. Yeah, so again, um, every single time between the labs, I will uh, wait for a couple of minutes. So the first lab is mainly about uh, actually installing different component, just um, again, we're gonna install two different clusters, some set of demo applications, 
and um, and Istio obviously and Gloomesh. Okay, so starting here by installing Istio. So we're gonna download Istio uh, CTL. Once this is done, then we're gonna install Istio on the first cluster. Okay, so the first workload cluster, and um, I'm creating some following like a kind of best practice of having Istio, D, uh, and the gateways separated. So first step is to basically install Istio D. And the second step is to actually install the gateways, okay? So the first cluster right now, it has, um, the first cluster, it has uh, Istio installed, okay? Now we're gonna do the same exact thing for, um, so I installed the gateways already. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the other um, cluster, which is cluster two. But first, let's take a look quickly here. And we see that now, okay, we have Istio running. Um, second step here is to create the same thing on the other cluster. And uh, again, in Gloomash, uh, like I think in in couple weeks slash months, uh, we'll have life um, life cycle support. So these steps will probably be able we be able to do it using Gloomash uh, configuration directly. All right. So now this is installed. This is there. Now at this stage, sorry, I'm gonna move this. Uh, at this stage, we should have also is to installed on the other cluster. Okay, let's take a second here to get to be ready. All right. Now that this is ready, let's just get the gateway address of the first cluster um, just for us to be able to use it in the next labs. Okay, so that's basically the address of the ingress gateway of cluster one. Now, next step is to install the book info application, right? Uh, so book info application here, the only difference from like mainly what we see in the issue docs um, we are going to install it on two different namespaces. So we're going to have like a front-end namespace and we're going to have a back-end namespace, all right? The back-end going to have the review service and, and all the ratings and so on. Um, and uh, the front-end going to have the product page. Um, now, we are going to do the exact same thing on the other cluster. Something to, to notice here is that we see that we deployed mainly all the components of the booking for application, but we are not deploying the V3 review service. Okay. We are deploying only version one and version two. If you guys are not familiar with the booking for application, the booking, the booking for application use like uh, three different review services and they all give like different stars colors, right? So, uh, I think the version one has no colors. Second one has black color uh, stars. And the third one, the version three has like red stars. So we are using that just as an, like an easy guidance where you don't see like red, when you, when you see red stars mean the communication landed on the cluster two because we're gonna install the service that serve red stars only on cluster two. So you'll see here that we are installing V3 of the application. Right, so the review v3 is here. Okay, so every time you see red stars on the UI, again, means like it's cluster two. Okay, uh, let's see if everything is up and running. Not yet.
I take a second here, but you see that some of them start to be to be ready. Uh, we're probably going to continue here. To we're going to also install another application. Um, HTTP bin, right? Everyone's familiar with it, but basically we're going to use it just for like a, a security example where, you know, we, we enforced um, not being able to talk from a cluster to another, uh, from from certain set of services to another. But let's uh, install again. Oh, what happened here? I was terminating. See what's going on. Oh, it's already there. And all right, so let's keep going here. We're going to install the HTTP bin service, and then we're going to install this, um, you know another HTTP bin service. The only difference between these two, one gonna be uh, within the mesh, like has, you know, as part of the mesh having a sidecar and all, and the other one would, would not be in the mesh. All right. Uh, and I think now we are ready to install the mesh. And so at this stage, we have two clusters with a set of demo application and issue installed in each of them. Now let's install Blue Mesh. First step here is to install Blue Mesh CTL, and then we're going to install Blue Mesh itself on the management cluster. You notice this management context. And uh, okay. Now This is starting. All right, this is ready. Now we can, we're gonna capture the server address of the management plane. If you guys remember, I discussed, I mean, I talked about the architecture model. So we had, we're gonna have like the management plane with the, basically the server running there, our glue mesh server. Um, now, when you install the agents on every single cluster during the installation phase, when you install the agent, you're gonna have to reference which management plane needs to point to, right? In this case, we're just grabbing the address of the address of the management plane. And now we can basically register one cluster. So to register one cluster, there's two phase to it. The first part is basically creating what we call a Kubernetes cluster. And that's just a kind of a description on the management plane. Say, hey, we expect a cluster to be registered called cluster one. And then there, the other phase is to in, actually install the agent itself on that cluster and give it a name saying, okay, I'm, I'm, this cluster is cluster one. And that's it. So that's the only step we need here to register our agent, our cluster to the management plane. Um, doing the same thing for cluster two. So we're registering the, both of them. <clears throat> All right. Now, if we take a look at certain metrics in the management plane, We see now that we have two different metrics, right? That are pointing to, you know, it, they are mentioning that we have the two clusters installed, okay? So at this phase, we have, um, so we have, again, two different clusters. Uh, it's still installed on each of them. We have a set of demo applications installed of, on both clusters. And now have GlueMesh and agents connected to GlueMesh to connect these two clusters to the management plane. All right. Now let's install 
another set of components, which is, um, I was talking previously about, you know, um, YDC flows and rate limiting, even if we're not gonna really use them right now uh, in doing this workshop, um, this is how we install, for example, uh, our X auth server to be able to do IDC at the edge or rate limiting, right? So we are going to install that on both clusters. Okay, so after that, we're just gonna define like a global setting. And we're gonna talk more about workspaces just in a bit. So this is to be able to use the uh, east to west gateways. So, so th the architecture that we have right now, right? Again, we have two different clusters. Actually, we have three. Right, we have the management cluster that contain Gumesh and contain basically it's a management cluster for us. And then we have two different clusters. These two different clusters they have Istio installed. Uh, they have the Gumesh agent installed connecting to the Gumesh server. They has a, they they have a set of applications, right? They have a set of demo applications. With the nuance here, the difference is that on one of the clusters we have V3 installed. Um, and yeah, and we have these two ingress, uh, ingress gateways and a set of, you know, this Gumesh add-on that they just installed right now, which is XAuth and Redis. And I'm not sure we're going to see it today, um, but still, that's how we install it. Okay, so once you are ready, once you're done with this, please click on check. It should take a couple seconds. And normally, if everything is installed, you should see a green banner. Sweet, let's start now. Okay, now the core of this discussion, why glue mesh and multi-tenancy with Istio. So um, now let's start designing our setup to have multiple workspaces. And these multiple workspaces will be a logical grouping of different namespaces for different personas. So let's say first we have an operation team. The operation team, they care about gateways. They care about maybe the edge and ingress gateway. They, already, they don't really care about the application that much, but that's what matters. So we are going to create a workspace for them. Uh, and that groups in this workspace definition, workspace in GlueMesh, it's a grouping under the same umbrella of multiple namespaces cross clusters. So in this example here, we see that the grouping that we have today here is that we are looking at two, the we're looking at the two ingress, uh, the two clusters that we registered, cluster one, cluster two. We are looking into grouping the Istio gateways namespace and the Glumash add-ons namespace. Okay, so both belong to the same workspace. So now when we look at the the gateways uh, workspace. It's actually a layer for the operation team. And they deal with the multiple component, which in, mainly in this work uh, workspace, it deals with the gateways. Um, uh, yeah, I have a quick question here. How long is it going to be available for the instructor tracks? It's going to be available for two days. OK, so something to note, the admin is the one defining the workspaces. Right, so a workspace is going to be applied at the management cluster, and it's going to define obviously this uh, segregation, this in the grouping of of uh, uh, namespaces. Now, as part of the, you know, the users team, like let's say the operation team or the the application team, they're going to define a 
a workspace setting, like to fine tune the selection of workloads that belongs to that grouping. So in this case, we'll see that we are, you know, the workspace setting is being created by the operation team on the cluster one. It's actually grouping, uh, you know, selectors on allow ingress through, and it's selecting on, on services and, uh, you know, on, on specific label. And we're going to see this labeling in action in like when we talk about, for example, policies and so on in a second. So once you create your workspace uh, settings, then we're going to create the same thing for the, um, the application team this time. Okay. All right. At this stage, again, the same thing we did previously, we're going to work, we're going to create like a workspace. Um, and this time it is grouping the, the two different application uh, namespaces on two, diff two different clusters. In this case, we saw that in every single cluster now we have the booking for application installed on two different namespaces, uh, the front end and the back end. Um, so this workspace is grouping the both of them under you know under the same workspace called book info. So that will allow you allow the application team to basically manage or actually you know deal with operation policy creation and so on on the application on the you know application workspace uh, even if it's cross cluster in this case we are you know having two clusters but that can be more all right another aspect to it now that we have uh, created the, the the workspace the admin created the workspace uh, for us now we can use the workspace settings so uh, something to mention and something different here we can see that now the uh, now the applic the the workspace application can import configuration from different from different namespaces right so it can import in this case we are importing from the gateway workspace right and we are exporting to the gateway workspace again uh, and again here in term of selection we'll see that we can fine tune the selection saying here, for example, I want to select on the product page, uh, the service review and so on. So I'm going to see how that operates when we're going to do like, for example, um, um, service isolation in, in a second. So this is what we have right now. We have, again, the two clusters, the management cluster, but you notice this time we have this layer uh, this grouping here for the gateway workspace, let's say our operation team is the one dealing with this. Uh, and then you're going to have uh, a book info workspace. And that's basically dealing with the application itself, even if it's across cluster, right? So you see in this case, it's across multiple clusters. Now, let's go ahead and now start deploying the routing to this application, right? So the first uh, thing we can do, and uh, so we have multiple CRs that deal with the routing. One, which is one of the most important for us, is the get uh, virtual gateway. So the virtual gateway is a component in Glue Mesh that manages your Istio, the, your, your Istio uh, ingress gateway installations, right? So. Uh, once you create a virtual gateway, you can select one or multiple ingress gateways and be able to apply certain configuration to them to be able to manage them all at once. And that is really important either like, for example, to manage multiple cluster, clusters and um, multiple gateways at once, which is obviously the, the core of it. But also when we start dealing with, you know, I was talking about Umesh gateway uh, previously, when we start adding um, you know, for example, uh, we want to enforce YDC and want to force, you know, rate limit and so on. The management of the gateway using a virtual a virtual gateway is important there, and we can associate that using and plus a route table to achieve like all YDC on a certain route. We're not going to explore that in particular uh, today, but just something to to note. Now, um, so. Let's go ahead and create our virtual gateway. 
once the virtual gateway is created, then we can start creating the routing. And for it to create the routing, we're going to use a route table. The route table CR is basically our way of defining routing. Um, in this case, obviously, it's going to trans translate to virtual service and certain cluster, or actually a set of clusters. So in this case, we'll see that we create a route table. It is attached to the virtual gateway. It's to, um, you know, uh, north-south gateway. Um, it has mainly, we'll see that, you know, we have the different uh, paths defined and something important to notice it is actually pointing to a destination uh, for a product page service and the, the book info front end um, uh, you know namespace right so once this is applied at this stage now we have our routing configured so if you go under cluster one http and if you uh, refresh this page a couple of times, we'll see that now we have the book info um, for us here exposed to the ingress gateway, right? Um, and you'll see that refreshing the page multiple times, you'll see that you're gonna always land on either no colors or on uh, a set of uh, black stars. And again, that's just an um, easy way for us to distinguish, as I mentioned before, when we install the services, that everything going only through the first cluster will have only these two set of colors. So at this stage, we just configured the routing to the, to the uh, product page of the service um, of uh, the cluster one. Okay, now let's, look at how we just do enforce TLS for that particular gateway. And we can use, you know, let's first create just uh, obviously the, the TLS secret. And then we're going to create, now uh, we will first create the certificate and then we're going to create the, the, the secrets in the both clusters. And then we're going to just use it in our virtual gateway. So the same way we had it before, it's still selecting only on the cluster one. Now we're opening an uh, HTTPS port and we are actually mentioning TLS secret in this case. And we are, this is how we enforce just a simple TLS using a virtual gateway CR. All right. So again, what we have right now, we have our client always talking to the ingress gateway and going to the product page on the first cluster. And now the communication is uh, using HTTPS. So if you want to test it, you just need to go under the cluster one. So it's not showing for some reason, but this cluster one, the second one here in this case is HTTPS. Okay. So refresh the page. Oops. Click on the wrong one. Oh, okay. It's just a new I think. Yeah. So cluster one HTTPS, you'll see. It is working now, it's going to the cluster one uh, always. Okay, so now let's take a look at policies and how we apply policies um, using Blue Mesh. So an easy thing to do, I'll we'll take a look here at the traffic policy, uh, at, uh, at traffic policies. The way we design Blue Mesh version two is to leverage the selector most of the time. So mainly before, I mean, obviously we used to have like, if you want to use to reference the policy uh, directly. Now, imagine reusing this policy like, like on different routes or different like configurations. Um, an easy way to do that uh, using GlueMesh V2 is to use, um, like define the policy once, that's what we need, give it a name, give it a label selector, uh, give it a label uh, selector and then define the label where you need this policy to be applied, okay? So in this example here, we are going to create a fault injection policy and this fault injection policy will have, will delay the configuration for two seconds for 100% of the traffic 
uh, the traffic that is matched there. Okay, so this is the policy. The one important thing here is see that we define the label selector to look for fault injection to be true. Okay, so let's apply the policy, and now let's see how we how to use this policy in our um, in our route table. So. We are using the exact, uh, actually we're using the rating, uh, creating a route table here for ratings that pointing to the ratings service, right? This time we define the routing. So matching on everything, just, you know, routing everything there, but we are applying a label on that particular route, uh, fault injection equal true. And that label will match with a policy we defined previously. And that's how we are adding the configuration to this uh, to this route. So, so once we apply this configuration here, and if we go back to the UI and we refresh, we'll see that it's taking two seconds or so to get this page ready. Okay. So this is how we apply a policy today. And it's gonna be true for all the policies. Define a policy once, define label selector, and then you just label the resources that need to have this policy on them. And that's how the policy gets applied. So in a similar manner, we're gonna look into um, a timeout policy, okay? So in this case, we are creating a timeout policy. Um, Defining the label to be, you know, 0 0.5 seconds, uh, that's the label selector. And now in terms of configuration itself, we are going to time out after 0.5 seconds. So let's create this. This is there. This is created. Now let's use that again in a route table. So this case, again, we are applying this to the review uh, service. And we are, the only thing we're doing here, we are actually applying the request timeout label that matches with the policy defined. And actually this is only for a subset V2, okay? So let's apply this. That is created. Now let's take a look at what is going on. So if I re refresh this, there you go. Okay, we see that that won't happen for the depend because it's like a round robin there, but like we see that now we enforce a timeout policy on, on the review service. We just, the only thing we did is to label that particular route, the right configuration. I hope you guys see the power of that because now it's super easy to define a policy once and be to be able to use anywhere, like in your application, um, uh, you know, namespaces. So, like because we have a workspace defined for our application, assuming we have a team that created the policy already for the timeout, or retries, or anything you want, then you're just gonna be able to to create a route directly on any namespace that belongs to that workspace and apply that labeling. And there you go. You have that configuration attached to it. All right. Um, so yes, this is what we did. Uh, so I don't know if we look at the configuration here. We still did this, all this only on the first cluster, right? So we define, we define a timeout from product page to the reviews, and we define a fault injection between the reviews and the ratings. Okay. All right, and using just labels. All right, now let's keep going and just delete these policies to not impact our testing. All right. Okay, so. In the previous uh, labs or actually previous steps, we saw how to define a workspace. We saw how to export to different workspaces. We saw 
how to create routing, how to manage a gateway and how to create the routing easily to one of your um, applications. And now we saw how to define policies and how to reuse them easily in your routing, right? Now let's take a look at a different aspect to it. Um, so another aspect to it is the root trust policy. And I think we have this question a lot, especially when you deal with multi-cluster, how to unify the trust and the identity across clusters, okay? So using GlueMesh, we have different mechanism. I mean, the, the, specific, the mechanism we have today is the, the root trust policy, right? So it will allow you to, let's say we have 100 clusters to be able to apply a policy once. And then you, so we can, be, we can do MTLS from a cluster to another easily. Okay, and that can create, so we can do that with just using, you know, self-signed certificates and that self-signed certificate gets applied everywhere, or we can integrate with a PKI. Okay, so imagine you have vault or so on. Like if you want to have your CA persist somewhere using that in your, you know, search rotation and, and management and, you know, unifying the trust across clusters easily using one policy. So if we take a look at this example here, so if we're looking at the cluster one service and we take a look at the, basically the CA, the, the certificates and the root CA we have here, uh, and we compare it with the one in the second cluster, we'll see that the root is different, okay? Um, basically because it's two different installs, right? And we didn't do any work there to unify the trust. Now, uh, to unify the trust, the only thing we have to do is to define a root trust policy. In this case, we're using just a self-signed certificate, but again, you can integrate with your PKI. So in, without this, we won't be able to do MTLS between services across clusters, but using this simple step, we will see that now both clusters share the same groups, allowing them to do MTLS from a cluster to another. And if we take a look at basically uh, one cluster, we take a look at the CA secret, we see that this got populated with the, the root CA and it's gonna be the same one for the other cluster. Um, yeah, so if you look at the second cluster, I think a visual thing was just to look at the last, um, um, you know, car characters there, you see they are the same. Uh, and if we even look at the workloads, we automatically restarted them so we can see now that they are having the same trust. Uh, if we look at the second workload, it is presenting the same root CA, okay? So this is um, like just an easy thing to do using, using Glue Mesh, having multiple components across multiple clusters, having multiple clusters registered to, to the same, management plane and having one root CA uh, root trust policy that unify the trust across all your clusters. Okay. Um, and this is, we're gonna just uh, restart our in mesh rollout here because it's not part of our workspace. Now let's take a look at traffic policy and how actually the workspace will help in that scenario. Okay, so previously we created the, the workspace, but explicitly we set which clusters obviously. Um, but now um, we can leverage the federation model in the workspaces to be able to capture the data from multiple clusters. And in this case here, our federation is defined, I mean, enabled to true. And it's actually selecting all the book info application, um, all the, the review service in the book info application, regardless where they are. I mean, across all the registered cluster. 
uh, clusters. Now, uh, as now let's let's see how we can use this um, easy way to do service discovery cross multiple clusters in like in our routing. So, in this example, we'll see that now that we have a federated federated workspace. Uh, let's just use it in the routing. So once we do the federation, it's going to create the service entries in every single cluster. So like for that specific service. So we know there's a way for us to be able to route to it, uh, you know, easily. So we can use it in a route table in this example. So we see that in this case, we are creating a route table and we are defining a route table for our review service, right? on the first cluster, actually uh, it's gonna to apply to everywhere. Uh, and it's gonna route specifically to the review service in cluster two with a subset v for a subset V3. Meaning that, you know, we talked about V3 version before, V3 will be only the red star. So if I apply this policy, all the traffic is forced to the V3 service uh, the, the V3 version of the review service in cluster two. So here you're gonna go in the cluster one, if you refresh the page, uh, no matter how, like, how many times, I mean, I think I forgot to delete my um, policies. Let's take a look. Uh, I don't know if I did this. A route table got deleted. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. Lights. Hmm. I don't know where is, let me see if I'm missing any configuration here. Okay, so did we apply this? Oh, the important part. I talked about the federation, but didn't apply it, right? So without that step, our, um, we couldn't like unify the multiple, you know, we can locate our book info review service on different cluster because it was only pointing to the first, to the first cluster with a subset V3 and we don't have that right installed. Actually it was pointing to a different cluster, but now we have the federation on, so it should operate correctly. Yeah, there you go. So now, we saw that it's pretty straightforward. The only thing we had to do is to turn on federation on one, on our workspace. We were we were able to locate all the review services, and then we were able to use directly the review service uh, in cluster two, uh, the, version, the version three of it. Right. Once this is applied, we we'll see if you guys refresh this page a thousand times, it's always going to be red stars. Why? Because the traffic is forced to always go to that subset on a different cluster, okay? And for us to do that, we just needed basically two steps. Um, and we can look at how this is happening. We'll see that, you know, we have a client talking to our Ingress Gateway, Ingress Gateway talking to our product page, and now forcing the traffic to the review service on the different cluster. All right, now let's take a look, actually gonna delete this route table. Okay. Now let's take a look at one really powerful um, component we have in Glue Mesh. It's called virtual um, destination. So a virtual destination is grouping of, you know, a set of services under the same basically DNS name. Uh, and it's allowed certain, like for example, it's allowed to create um, routing regardless 
where the service is. I think this is powerful because for any developer or actually any user of a service, if I'm, if I'm an owner of service foo on a call service bar, I don't want to really want to care about where is my service bar. I just want to be able to call it. And if the service bar is within the same cluster, that's great. I'm going to go straight to it. If not, I just need to route to the closest service bar near my service, right? That's what is, that's the power of, you know, using a virtual destination. So um, let's see how we can use that. First, we're going to create, actually, this time we are using the virtual gateway, the same one. But this time, before we used to select only on the cluster one, this time we're selecting on all, all the clusters. All right, this is installed. This is configured. Now, let's create a virtual destination. And, and you see the virtual destination here is pretty straightforward, define the host, and then we define basically where the traffic should go. In this case here, we're defining that the traffic should go to a product page service in the book info front end application that is within obviously my workspace, right? So we're not gonna be colliding with anything else, but using this, this simple configuration, we have grouped all our product page services across all our workspace, okay? All right, oops, let's apply this, this is done. Now let's use it in the route table. Okay, the kind of same thing we did before, before we point directly to a service. This time we can point to a virtual destination, All right? Instead of defining, or okay, I wanna point, I wanna have all my traffic going to my product page, uh, on cluster one, we're just gonna say, I want just my traffic going to product page, right? Uh, and regardless of where they are, I mean, obviously if the same cluster, we're going there. If not, we're going uh, somewhere close. Okay, so once this is created, uh, this type of routing we have, now we can, you know, because we federated the gateways too, if, and if you call the second uh, cluster, it's also, it's also using, you know, the virtual destination, so it's also know how to route traffic to which cluster, to which product page. All right. And we see that this is going to the product page on the cluster two because we have the rest stars. And uh, then let's continue here and actually see the power of a virtual destination. Let's see how, you know, the scenarios where um, a service is down right? Something is, is going wrong in my workspace. I mean, in my specific namespace for my service uh, and my service is down. I just want to be able to fail over to another product page somewhere else. So let's first define a failover policy. And we see that here in this case, we are going to apply that to a virtual destination and specific, specifically to a virtual destination labeled failover, failover true, sorry. Okay, the failover policy is defined. Then let's create an outlayer detection policy that's just to evict the host of the product page when we're gonna be testing and breaking it down. That will you know, enforce the fact that now, okay, the service is not available, let's do something about it. So our outlayer, uh, detection policy is set here. And again, something important, it's applied to virtual destination, failover would failover equal true. Now, the only thing we have to do is to apply that to our virtual destination again. So it is the same exact one. The only difference now, we have failover labeled here. All right, this is done. Now let's test it. So if we, if we bring down our product page on the first cluster, tear it down, okay? It's completely scaled down here. If we do that, 
it should still work. Oh, sorry. A wrong tab. Here. Keep refreshing this page. Let's keep work. It's still working. And we see that actually, I definitely see that my replicas are zero. I kind of, you know, my my service is not there anymore. And actually what's happening here is pretty straightforward. We are going from the client to the ingress gateway. We know actually that the product page is not there anymore. We're directing that to the product page of the second cluster, which is within the same workspace. Now, okay, so that's when the service is not available at all. Now let's look at another system, like another thing. Let's even bring it back to service. So it's up here, but that's, you know, having a service completely down, that's not really a super common scenario unless there's something wrong with deployment itself. I mean, another scenario would be that just my service is not behaving correctly and it's returning like 504, for example. So in this example here, uh, we are keeping the service up, but we are actually making it do nothing. We are patching it to just you know, run the sleep process. So it's not doing anything. And uh, going back again to the cluster, routing here. Again, it's still route. Because of this out layer policy, even if the service is down or if the service is up, misbehaving, we're still fading over to a different cluster. And now, um, you know, if we, so if you keep going here, we'll see that we have the red stars at some point coming, meaning that's going to the cluster too. But now let's just put it back. Let's just fix our system again. Now the service is back. If we go back to the cluster one, we'll start doing Refreshing the page, you will never, you not, you will not see the red stars. Why? Because now my service is available uh, again, right? And it is served by cluster one. So all the traffic, if you noticed here, all the traffic will go to my cluster because I don't have to fail over. My service is back again. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, that's the that was the last step of this particular step, uh, lab. And now let's look at another component, which is really important in uh, like the multi-tenancy model is, um, you know, like service isolation. If I have a set of services that belong to the same workspace and are even cross clusters, I want to be able to apply a policy to enforce the fact that these services cannot be, you know, reached by something else, not a service. Okay. Um, so let's take a look here. And let's make an example, like take an example here without the settings. We're gonna try to call our, you know, our service review. Um, we're gonna call, try to call our service review from an application that is uh, not in the mesh actually at all, right? It is there in our cluster, but not in the mesh. And we're gonna be able to see that now we are gonna have a 200 okay. It's small here, but you're gonna see 200 okay here. Now let's try to basically also call from a service that is within the mesh, but not in the workspace, okay? So this is the nuance here. Um, it is in the mesh this time, but not in the workspace. We have 200, okay? We're getting 200, okay. Uh, and, okay, so let's lock this down. Let's just force all the services to not be reached by something else. And to do this in our workspace setting we set up earlier, the only thing we have to add is the service isolation to true. So once defined to true, it will isolate this set of services to not be able to be reachable from something else, from somewhere else. And uh, trim proxy config here, this is a good addition because 
we know that you know Istio service discovery. If you look at the every single sidecar, it knows about every single other service. If you want to trim that config down to only basically having your set of services knowing only about the service they need to care about and not others, using that will definitely reduce a lot of config. All right, so let's apply this here and see how our system behave again. So once this is applied, let's do a call again using a service that is not within the mesh and see how this works. If we make a call here, we see zero, zero, zero. Um, mainly that just an HTTP code to say nothing happened, right? Like the request didn't even like happen. Um, but if it's within the mesh, but not in the same workspace, or we'll make a call, we're gonna get a 403. So regardless, either the service is within the mesh or outside of the mesh, it won't be able to communicate with the services within that workspace. Okay, um, that was the end of this workshop. Thanks for, for joining. If you guys have any questions, we are available. Feel free to ask us any questions. Uh, we are on the Istio Slack. We are on the solo slack we're on linkedin twitter and so on so thanks again for joining